So here are five things you need to do in order to organize your classroom so you can be as efficient and uh, effective as possible. But before we get into those five things, let me play that intro and let's get going. Number one is a seating chart. Oh man, if you watch any of my other videos, you know how important the seating chart is to my classroom. You need to have a seating chart because what happens, the seating chart allows you to plan out effectively how you're going to lay out your classroom. It allows you to solve problems before they even begin. Because with a good seating chart, you can isolate students that may be an issue. You can pair students up that maybe can hopefully help each other out. You can organize it in a way so you can distribute papers and collect papers quickly as well. And as also, you, that way you can move around the classroom for proximity. So a good seating chart is imperative for classroom organization. Now what you want to do is, is depending upon <clears throat> how you are as a teacher, if you're very effective with classroom management, then I, you can definitely you know, put them in groups. That's no problem at all. But if classroom management is a little bit of struggle, I would recommend the old fashioned rows, the old fashioned rows, if classroom management is a struggle. But that's something for you to figure out. But either way, the seating chart and the classroom structure, the, the how the layout of the classroom is, is so important creating the overall environment. The second thing you need to do is have somewhere, a board or something, that lays out what students are going to be working on. And, and so for me, I, I like to have it on a weekly basis. So I'll create a calendar on my board that talks about what students are going to learn, how they're going to learn it, and how do we know they're going to learn. It has the date next to it. Then also there has extra credit they can work on, their homework. So one location where students can see everything that's going on for the week. Now, I'll be honest with you, even though I have this, I, sometimes students don't always pay attention. I might have to uh, point them to the board several times, but at least it's there as a visual cue what's going on. Uh, also, it's also a visual cue for me, um, because I, oh, I cannot tell you. Well, I'll come in the next day and I'm like, what was I teaching yesterday? What am I doing today, right? You, you, I wish you ever had that moment, like, what am I doing today? If I have it on the board, I'm like, ah, oh, that's right. That's what I'm doing. So it's also a visual cue for me to remind me of how I'm playing out my entire week. And, and, the, and the last part of that as well, if a student is ever absent, they'll know exactly what was missed and they'll know exactly what assignment they have to do and so forth. And so a board or something that kind of lays out the calendar for the week, or if you just want to do the day, you could just do the day as well, uh, but just something that you can refer to so students know what's going on. The third thing is you need to have some system put in place, some organized way put in place of collecting papers and grading papers and passing papers back. So in your classroom, you gotta think about how am I going to collect papers, how I'm gonna grade papers, and how am I going to pass them back? Because you can have a great lesson and everything's going great in the classroom, but what you're gonna find out is if you don't have that third component in place, collecting, passing, and grading, you're going to find yourself getting quickly overwhelmed. And once that happens, once you find yourself behind the eight ball, it's hard to carry the momentum going of great lessons because you're like, oh my gosh, I got to do all this work. And then you get exhausted grading all the good stuff. And the next day comes in and you find yourself kind of falling behind. So you want to put something in place so you can pass out papers, collect papers, and grade papers. For my classroom, it's quite easy for passing out papers. Um, I, the way it's set up, is if need be, um, I'll have a student pet papers on the desk. So let's say we have a worksheet going on for the day, all right? And so the worksheet's going on for the day, for the first part of class, <clears throat> I'll have a student, basically one of the first students come in, I'll have them put a paper on each desk. That way it's there for the students they come in. I used to do it when I was at the door, but that became kind of tedious because I could never pass the papers out you know, quick enough for the kids coming in, and then I wasn't able to monitor what's going on inside. So I'll just have students pass out the papers on the desk when students walk in. Now if it's during class period and I have to pass the papers, I try to make it during a transition time. So let's say they're working on the first worksheet. Towards like you know the last few minutes of that worksheet being completed, I will start passing out the second part of the worksheet, our second worksheet. And so that way what happens is um, there's no lag in those transition periods, right? There's no lag at all. And so uh, that's another way I pass the papers. Or I might have a student do it as well. But either way, you want to create something to pass out papers. Now, collecting papers, same thing. You can have students collect papers. Um, you can just have them pass them forward a certain way or pass them down the row. Uh, for me, what I'll do 
is I'll actually have students turn papers into my in-bin as they're leaving class. So that way, there's no actually time in class taken to collect papers, or in order to have to worry about the logistics, logistics of it. Just as students are walking out, what they'll do is they'll put the paper in the bin, boom, there you go, I have all the papers collected by the end of class period. So that's how I collect papers. Now grading papers, oh my gosh, this is where you can get bogged down. Create a system for grading papers. Here's some recommendations. Uh, one is, um, don't grade everything I say. I will, forget. Don't look at everything with a fine tooth comb, all right? There's some things that you want to. Like if it's, if it's some skills you're trying to see students improve on, spend more time on those. But if it's just work that students did and you want to make sure they're, you know, keeping on top of the work, don't look at each one and spend a lot of time. Quickly come up with a stamp, that might solve the problem. You can even stamp papers uh, before, you know, they leave as a way of quickly doing the grading, right? Um, so that's a possibility. Uh, you can uh, collect all the work at the very end of the week in some sort of packet. So that way, instead of having five papers to grade uh, for a week, you just have one solid packet to grade. Um, that's another possibility as well. What I have done for myself, which has streamlined things tremendously, is this. At the end of the class period, I'll, I will have kids count their own points. And so I teach them this. At the beginning of the year, I spend about a good week and a half or so uh, uh, going over all my structures, all my procedures. And so I'll teach kids how to count their points. And so before class is up, let's say we're taking notes, before class is up, students will count their points. And they'll put the total at the top. All right? And then what happens when they walk out, they put the paper in the end bin. Boom, there we go. Their points are already counted by them, and they put it in the end bin. If I want to do a quality check on that, what I'll do is I'll take somebody for the next period, an A student, a really responsible student for the next period, and they'll recount the points of the notes. And so now I have the original points from the students that actually did it. I have all the papers collected before they left, and the next period, the student recounts the points, a brand new student recounts the points, and the points are verified. So at the end of the day, the only thing I have to do is put those grades, those points, into the computer. And that takes maybe, maybe 10 minutes. So on a whole day's worth of work, I maybe have 10 minutes of grading to do. How easier would your life be if you only had 10 minutes of grading to do, right? You could focus on creating the best lesson plans, you could focus on classroom magic, you could focus on all those things you need to to make your classroom great. So make sure you have something down for collecting papers, grading papers, and passing them back. And for passing them back, I just have one of, once again, a responsible student, pass back papers, and it makes my life so much easier. Next, you have some organized way of storing your lessons. Now, here's the thing. If this is your first year teaching, second year teaching, you only have a few lessons. But as you go through each year, you're going to find more and more and more lessons that work in your classroom. And the ones that don't, you can put somewhere else. But you want to start organizing that. You want to start organizing from the very beginning lessons that work. So the next year comes, you don't have to recreate the entire will. You, you have uh, uh, some lessons to choose from. And then you'll know which one of those you want to use, don't, and you can introduce more. But have some place to store those lessons. Now, for me, I have a two different ways. I have a file in a cabinet, you know, where I can store my lessons at, uh, and some copies and this and that. Uh, and then I also have, of course, in my Google Drive, I store my lessons there as well, depending upon the material I'm using. Uh, but bottom line is, make sure you have a system uh, for, for lesson plans, it's because when you find that gem, you find that great lesson, you don't want to lose it. And, and you don't, trust me, if you have to create lessons every single year, and you do this for 20 years, you're gonna go crazy. Keep what works, store it, be able to find it quickly for the following year. And the last thing you need to do to organize your classroom is this, you need to be able to have some area where you can lay out your lessons for the next day uh, or even for the next week. Because my advice to you is this, uh, do not leave the classroom until you're 100% prepared for the following day. Because nothing is worse trying to scramble coming in the following day, try to make copies, and try and then oh has this happened to you you try to make copies there's a line for a copy machine and finally you get to the top of the line it's your turn the copy machine breaks down and you can't make the copies you need and your whole entire day is ruined for that so my philosophy my belief is never leave the day unless you're prepared for the following day including knowing what you're doing as well as all the copies that you need and so to do that you need some place to keep all that at and i for me personally i plan like two three weeks out in advance 
and that there's always, of course, you know, that's just the broad thing. I know everything can change from day to day, but I keep, I've, I got a three week plan and then I make coffees and prepare for the next week coming up. So the Friday before I leave, I make sure the whole next week is ready to go. Coffees and all that. So that way, if I, some emergency comes up, I am prepared, you know? And, and so to do that, um, have some place where you can lay out your work. And so for me, I have this uh, table by the front of my room uh, that has different drawers in it. And then also have like a little bookshelf right there. So that is where I'll lay things out uh, for the upcoming week. And so that way, if I need to quickly grab something, boom, it's all ready to go in one spot. So have that organization in place.